just for the conference. So, thank you everyone for attending this session. As a disclaimer before I start the session, I would like to mention that I have learned so many things in the last day and a half. I have learned there are around 7 to 8 new titles in the IT world <laughs> for managing technology and data. And that must be a fun thing for a CEO to actually understand what you do versus what you do and what you do. Plus, I also was keeping a track of all the new keywords and buzzwords that I've learned in this conference. I've heard about these things before, but I did not believe them. Now I'm seeing people who are using them, so I'm believing them. So 23 keywords so far, and counting. And after these six or seven titles and 23 keywords, each one of the presentations is talking of making it simple. I don't know how. So with that as a context, I'm going to share with you uh, something that we have done within my company, where we did not use any one of these titles, we did not use any one of these keywords, we just stuck to fundamentals. I'm not saying it is right or not, I just want to share that study with all of you. So we're going to talk about nutrition and behavior analysis using big data. Just before I go into the actual case study, I want to give you a background about our, co our, our company. We are a French company uh, doing business in 41 countries worldwide and about a billion euro in revenue, primarily focused on money movement in the pre-trade world. So what does that mean? Around 40 years ago, there was a regulation in uh, Europe that if you are an employer and if you have employees, you either provide them cafeteria on site for lunch or give them money to buy lunch. If you give them cash, it's taxable, number one. Number two, nobody knows where you spent your money. To address the problem, the company came out with a concept called voucher 40 years ago. And they built network of uh, retail stores, network of supermarkets who can accept those vouchers in return to selling you meal. That's how the company started and then it ventured out into many other businesses all around money movement. So this is our foot footprint and we are heavily into food because we do a lot of food vouchers, meal vouchers. If you ever been to Europe, like we go to France or London, you will see um, ticket voucher, meal voucher, uh, ticket restaurant, you will see those things on the restaurant signs. Wrong button. So, around a couple of years ago, we thought of starting a new venture. A venture that focuses on health and wellness of employees. If you look at US population, obesity is increasing year by year. Healthcare cost is going up year by year. Number of people going to the gym has also increased by the same pace. That made logical sense that we cannot, eat, we cannot walk our way to be a healthy individual unless we focus on something else. And that something else based on academic research was nutrition. Unless we focus on what we are eating, no matter how much we work out, we cannot be healthy. That was our belief. With no uh, logical reasoning behind that, we hired uh, medical researchers, market analysts to go out and validate our thought process. The research came out very positive. Yes, there is evidence if you eat healthy, you are going to live a, uh, a healthier lifestyle. Of course, you need to exercise also, but eating healthy becomes very important. So with that in mind, we built out a brand new company, which is a joint venture between Eden Red and one more uh, shareholder called Nutri Savings with a mission to reduce the healthcare cost for employers through proper nutrition of employees. Now, I'm not a grandma or grandpa to tell you what to eat. We acknowledge that. So, number one. Number two, there are many applications that do food logging and food journaling. It's very cumbersome. I do not see myself doing food logging and food entry for the next 52 weeks to find out, hey, I really was eating bad food. So we wanted to do something which is all automatic, all behind the scenes, 
And with that, we went out and built a nutrition focused ecosystem, the first ecosystem in the country, which connects supermarkets, food manufacturers, food growers, health plans, and employers with one purpose of giving reason to employees for buying healthy food items for them and their families. But the challenge is, when I'm going to my grocery store to buy healthy food items, I assume I am buying healthy. I have got the right intent at my heart. But in reality, I really don't know what I'm buying is healthy or not. So that's the first confusion at the point of sale when you're browsing the aisle of a supermarket. Second, there is generally a perception healthy is expensive. Is it a myth or not? I'm not going to fight that, but it's a perception. Let me accept that. How can I take the objection off the table? So with these things, we started building this ecosystem. And we said, we want to build an ecosystem, the first ecosystem that can actually track the behavior change over a period of time. Now, this is all business goal, no technology over here. If I map it back into technology, this is a big data application. Because what I'm trying to do is building a conduit from supermarkets where I'm going to get the shopping trip data. I'm going to get a conduit from food manufacturers, which is going to give me structured and unstructured data about all the food items, the images of food items, the nutrition panel, the ingredients, a lot of information. And I'm going to work with many third-party aggregators also, and working with health plans also to pick the conditions, the allergies of employees or other subscribers, and make some logical sense out of that. So that, all this vision and mission got boiled down to this big data challenge that we signed up for um, last year. Yes. Visual analysis, no analytics background for that, but visually people should be able to say if this cheerio is healthy or not, because sometimes packaging is different, it's misleading. Just because it's, it's saying heart healthy may not really mean heart healthy. So this was our time constraint. We spun off this joint venture in April, and we had a first client which is scheduled to go live in October, six months. And we do not have any data scientists, we do not have any CDOs. We do not have any CAOs on our staff. We only had one C, which was a customer. And we have to bend our backs, twist wherever way we want to twist, to focus on that C, which is a customer. Doesn't matter what my role, what my title is. That was irrelevant at that time. So looking back, there were many challenges that we faced. The first challenge was, of course, logistical challenges. Are we really going to get the data? What if supermarkets say, no, I cannot give you the data? And I don't even know what's the quality of data I'm going to get. Can I make meaningful use out of the data? What will be the key I'm going to use to combine this data with somebody else? Similarly, my skills, my human resource skills. We, had, we are a completely Microsoft shop. As Eden read, we are a Microsoft shop. I do not have any more skills outside those usual Microsoft products and technologies. Should I hire somebody? Should I train somebody? Is there enough time for me to hire, train, and deliver the product for a C, which is a customer? And last but not the least, which vendor should I choose? There are so many options out there. With due respect to all the vendors, there are so many options out there. And I don't know what I don't know. My biggest fear is getting struck in a contract that I cannot get out of just because I don't know what I don't know. See, these were the challenges that we faced. If we go further into this, these challenges, of course, the first challenge was time. We had a fixed window of time, six months, from concept to reality. And second was, of course, getting the data from all the supermarkets and health plans. Frequency of data, format of data, volume of data, quality of data, how to do cleansing of data. We have no skills for that. We talk about in-house challenges. We had people available out in the market who were data scientists, who had done modeling and risk analysis about those things, but they did not know our domain. 
we were learning our own domain in six months of time. So, we could not really rely on external resources. And last but not the least, as the concept was so new, there is no existing business that we can follow the trail of, our thought process was evolving, which was reducing the ambiguity, at the same time to changing the scope on a daily basis. So we are shooting a moving target. And we talked about vendor lock-in and of course, data security and privacy issues were there. So, within six months of time, we went through PCI compliance, we went through HIPAA compliance, we went through a bunch of other compliances and we decided to stick to fundamentals. Looking at all the risks, I said, you know what, nobody can take all the risks on. So let me focus on the risks that I cannot live without. Number one, can I live without data from supermarkets? Answer is no. Can I live without data from the aggregators about product images and catalog? No. Can I live without uh, all the big data technologies? Probably yes, I don't even have knowledge of those things. Can I live without a third party vendors? Probably yes. Can I live without regulation and security? No, because nobody will give me the data. So we took our calculated risks and we decided to do everything in-house, every single thing in-house. And we used our plain old fashioned relational database. So how do we do that big data thing in a database that supposedly should not be used for big data? We took the data, we did not have staff to actually manually cleanse the data. We were having questions this morning. As we were learning pitfalls with the data, we started defining rules to start creating alerts and checks so we can have teams getting notified at the other checks that are failing. I don't, want to, I don't have people to start doing cleaning on a manual basis. But I had to go, I had to send people to active supermarkets sometimes to scan and take pictures of products because we found out that even the third party product databases or the CPG companies, there is no single product database that exists in, in the US. So we had to send people out to take picture of products and I had to have people reading the pictures, do data entry so I can have all my product catalog built in. That was an important task for me. So what we did was take all the data, normalize, denormalize, normalize, denormalize, reduce it to a level where it is so simplified format in terms of creating taxonomies, creating different structures of tables. So it is going through six or seven cleansing steps and denormalization steps before we finally can write an actual join in SQL Server and get the data, which is a meaningful use, number one. Number two, as we are talking about big data, and I think somebody mentioned yesterday, all the big data discussion we had so far seems like an afterthought, meaning the business is going on, we have produced this much amount of data, now how can we make a logical sense of the data to make it meaningful? And then, this data is for specialized users. Our goal was totally different. I wanted the big data to be a part of the business, not an afterthought, number one. Number two, our goal was to take this power to people. What does that mean? If you are going to a grocery store, and if I give you a mobile app to scan a barcode of a product, you should be able to get nutritional score of the product right on the fly. That is big data. In your, at your fingertips, not by given to you by an analyst. If you go and do grocery shopping, I want to send an email to you that you bought these 15 items, this for your score, and by the way, the other healthier alternative that you can try to buy next time, which tastes the same, costs the same, this is big data delivered to you at your fingertips. No specialized engineer behind the scenes doing those munging of data. If you are buying something, I want to give you recipes which are relevant to what you bought, so you can cook healthy after you have bought those grocery items, without any intermediate economist, data scientist, or any other layer in between. Because if I cannot do that, I have no business. I am trying to do behavior change over here as a part of nutri savings. It has to be a dumbed down version of big data. And for me to do dumb down version of big data, I have to actually internalize the concept 
and forget about those 23 keywords that we learned since yesterday and focus on only one thing that we have all learned while in college, SQL statements, and focusing on customer to do behavior change. That's it. Thank you.